Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. I hope everyone's having a wonderful day. So first, I hope you had a good weekend. Uh, just a couple of things before I get started. Well, technically a few. Uh, just as a reminder, remember that assignment one is due by the end of Wednesday. Uh, just, just as something I mentioned last time is that technically I'm going to allow you to submit up until about 8.30 in the morning, Regina time, uh, your assignment, uh, so the following morning. Uh, that's because I, I won't obviously be able to look at your assignment while I'm sleeping, so it won't make much of a difference anyways. Uh, so if you find yourself really needing that time, whether it be a technical issue or something like that, uh, that time will be available beyond this 11.59, but on paper it's 11.59. Hopefully that's clear, everybody. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, so uh, I released uh, last night, I put out assignment two. That's going to be due on October 13th by the same kind of, by the end of that day, same rules. Uh, in this assignment, uh, you'll have some fun uh, designing an Epsilon NFA. Then I'll be getting you to design me some regular expressions, then interpret some regular expressions, and then you'll be using actually uh, these constructions that I've been giving you lately for Claney's theorem. So I'll be asking you to build me from a regular expression an Epsilon NFA, and then I will be getting you to give me a way, so if I give you a DFA, you're gonna give me a regular expression. That's basically the next assignment it's gonna be like. It's not as long, uh, but uh, definitely something to get your get on as soon as you can. But uh, other than that, uh, remember there's that onboarding quiz uh, for the, it involves the final exam towards the end of the class, but please complete that onboarding quiz by September 30th. If you have any issues, uh, I recommend contacting the information service people or myself. So, other than that, are there any questions before I get started? Are we all good to go? Because I want to get back to the second part of Claney's theorem. Because I stopped right at the base, the basis of our induction proof, and now I want to do the induction part, which I consider pretty slick. It's pretty slick. Okay. I think we're good. I think we're good. So anyways, last day, remember I told you when we did the basis, I was considering, so first, before anything, remember I defined this notion of a k-path to you? Recall if I assume all the states are numbered or labeled from 1 through n, and uh, what's going to happen is I want to consider all possible pathways I can take up to, so the ends don't really, the ends, remember, the ends of the path don't matter for the labels. However, every intermediate node along my path I has to have label number at most k. So that's going to be very important in this next step I'm going to bring up. And that's the slick part of this induction proof. So on the basis, I showed you some rules for building the, uh, the, uh, building the regular expression. When, say, you just have a an edge that goes from i to j, where they're not the same node. And I also gave it for when it is, in fact, a self-loop. Remember that if there is no transition here at all, uh, as in like i and j just don't have a pathway that's direct with no intermediate nodes, you would just you would put in the empty set. So like you just have empty set. And then here, if you had, say, no loop here, you would end up with empty set union epsilon but this is actually equal to epsilon. Why? Because you start off with the empty set and you're actually performing a union with a set containing the empty string, which means that this is just the expression epsilon. So I want to get into this induction part because this is probably the slickest thing that's going to happen in this lecture. Okay, you're going to find out why this k path thing is really important. So I'm going to assume for the sake of induction, that there is a k-path, p, from state i to state j. There's going to be two possibilities, and it's really going to boil down to this. So I want you to remember that with the notion of a k-path from i to j, it can look like a couple of different things. So imagine I have first, first I have a path, this k-path. It might 
It might go through for several notes. It might go through several notes. It might take its trip around. It goes around in your in the DFA uh, from I to J. But in this case, imagine it doesn't pass through the node that is labeled with K. So imagine there is no node or state in that pathway that goes from I to J that doesn't include K in it. So if you think about it, okay, that means that every label for a node in this path will be no more than K minus one, right? Because if it doesn't contain K as one of the, the states, then surely it can be, it can be K minus one or less, right? So when you think about that, this contains, of course, this has a, so this is the first case. The first case is very simple. It's just that uh, where there's no state K that it's passed through. So this is the first case. So P never, P never goes through, P never goes through state K. Now, if you think about it, think about it inductively. <laughs> okay, so if I have a K path P from state I to state J, I can actually state in exact terms what this should look like as a regular expression. Then the string corresponding the string corresponding. Oh, I lost my turtle friend. Corresponding to the label, the label of P is in the language of the following expression. It's in, now think about it. Remember that notation I told you about with the R? It's the, it's R. Now remember, I'm going from I to J, I to J, and I told you it never goes through state K. That means the K isn't an intermediate node in this. Hence, every one of the states might go through in my path has label no greater than K minus one. So, this would actually be the expression for this case. So that's the first case. So K never, so P never goes through state K. That means naturally the other case is when P goes through state K. Goes through state K one or more times. So it goes through state K one or more times. Now, before I write this down, I want to be very careful with you. Okay, I'm going to draw another picture that's like this one. So now remember, the picture isn't the proof. It's just the structure I want to expose to you that matters. Okay, so if I go from I to J, like this, so I go from I to J and I'm gonna have some path. And I would tell you that it could go through, I through, it could go through a state K several, one or more times. So it's gonna go for a little walk. It's gonna go through, just da 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 do. And then what happens? What happens? It passes through K maybe once. So here's state K. And then maybe, maybe it could run into it again. Maybe it goes on a little trip. Maybe there's a self loop somewhere on state K. It visits K possibly again. And it may pass through K again. And then it'll take a little trip over to J. Now, if you think about it, if you look carefully at this picture that I drew here, that really you're looking at three parts of, so if I give you a, a string that corresponds to the path P, 
it really looks like kind of three things. Notice that I take from i to k, I have to go here, right? You would agree with me that state k is an end point of this path right here, just like k i is. So anything that happens in between here, this is going to be no more like that, that definitely will not be k, right? There's nothing in between here that's going to have a state label large, like equal to k. It's always going to be smaller than k. Likewise, the same thing happens over here. But notice everything here, the endpoints could be k, and the end could be k, but it doesn't matter because it's just like, okay, everything in between each one of these has labels no more than k. But in fact, it's even better than that because in between here and here, there's no k in braid here. It's always a state label less than k. So I want to kind of expand on this. And then you'll see that really there's actually three pieces to any, so if I were to describe a string that were being processed by the DFA that goes through this process, it actually goes through, there's actually like three pieces to the string. That's really what I'm saying. And it has this very specific structure. It's kind of neat. Uh, so watch this, watch this. So let me uh, notice, notice that the label Notice that the label of P can be decomposed, can, decom can be decomposed into three parts. Based on, based on states, states I, J, and K. So there's kind of three pieces. So I'm going to describe them to you. So from I to K without passing through K. But if you think about it, if I go from I to K without passing through any state K along the way, I could describe it in a way quite similar to this, right? It's not quite exactly the same as this, but it's quite quite similar without passing through k. Because remember, I don't count the ends of my k paths, right? I don't count them in my whole thing. So that means that every label between here, the intermediate nodes along here that I pass through, all have label at most k minus one. Without passing through k, is described by R I K. Notice the K here. K minus one. So it's described by a K minus one path. This first part. So that's what A. What I just described here is A. So this is this first part right here. That's A. Naturally, you might ask, okay, well, where's the second part? Well, it's from k to k. A zero or more times. So if you think about it, So if you think about it, okay, if I use this notation to describe my expression, I'm going to do something quite similar. R k k k minus 1, because remember, between any two, so if I look at any one of these two, notice every label between k and k has no label larger than k. In fact, it's at most k minus 1. So what can I write down? That. Now, you might say from k to k. Now, you have to be careful about this. This can happen zero or more times. So all of this, I'm going to capture my second part, where I have zero or more times this is going to happen. Now, does anybody have any ideas what I could do to that expression so that it occurs zero or more times? 
Remember, it's a regular expression. Can somebody tell me? Say, if I wanted to repeat this zero or more times. Star, yeah, perfect, perfect. So all I do is just da 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 do your, I put a star on that. <laughs> so now naturally you have the third part. This is the part that's left. It's quite similar to what I just described before. Perfect. So, so now I just have from K to J, from K to J without passing through K. without passing through K is expressed by is expressed by R R K J. Remember, I start at K and I go to J. And like I like before, every state along the intermediate nodes in my path have labeled no greater than K minus one. So is that, isn't that kind of slick? So now I've described to you a way of getting, getting for a given K path, how I could describe it as a regular expression using parts of a K minus one path. So you might ask Dan, okay, well, what does that mean? So let me just stitch all of this together so I could give you the regular expression. So let me give you the regular expression. So now we have our kind of, our, our pieces here. I've got case one and I have case two. So, 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 so all together, so all together, so all together we obtain the following. So all together, by applying union, for the two cases, we have the expression So, so now I could describe to you Rij, K. This is going to be equal to, now I had case one, right? Case one is that one right there. Rij, K minus one, right? That's when I have it where it doesn't go ever through stay K as an intermediate node. Or I have case two happen. So I use the union as an or. So now I'm going to put all of these pieces together. So I had the three pieces. What operation should I use to put them all together? Starts with a C. Because I have those three pieces in case two. What should I use? Concatenation. Yep, thank you. Thank you. So I'm just going to concatenate them because remember, I decomposed it, the path into three parts. So if I give you the first part, second part, and third part, you should just concatenate them all together. So I have RIK, K minus one, and then I have RKK, K minus one. That should be star. And then lastly, we have RKJ. K minus one, like this. Boom. <laughs> so now we have a way we can actually build the regular expression given a smaller ex set of ex expressions. So now I have a way I can actually build an expression given, say, say if I start at k is equal to zero, I could show you how to get k is equal to one, and k is equal to two, and k is equal to three, and so on. Why? Why? Watch this, watch this. As a remark, as a remark, to compute, 
to compute i r i j k we rely on computing on computing computing expressions expressions with smaller smaller subscripts i uh, sorry superscripts I'm talking about this k here. Because notice that I need to compute, to compute k r i j 1, I need to know r i j 0 at least, right? Superscript. By computing using using increasing A superscript starting at at k is equal to zero. All expressions all expressions can be made veil made av be made available available. To compute R K I J for any K is equal to zero, one, two, all the way up to N. So all I'm just describing to you is that you re it requires computing these smaller expressions to obtain the larger ones, which makes sense. You can think of it just like you're looking at this recursively, right? Or if you say you want to look at it more from the bottom up perspective, you have to build you have to build that first. Build you have to build each one of these before I can compute that. So now this is the last part. Notice notice that for k is equal to n, we can compute as described above, as described above, R, R, I, J, superscript is N for all I and J. For all I and J. Assuming, assuming the start state, and I must stress that the start state doesn't necessarily have to be one, it just makes it easier to do this. Uh, it's easier to kind of follow through with the steps. Assuming the start state is one, then, The regular expression for L of D, so the language of the DFA D, is the union, is the union, or sum, uh, some, the, that's why the plus is kind of intuitive, you think of it as like I'm collecting them up. Uh, the, the, the union uh, the union of all expressions of all expressions r i sorry i want r since the start state is 1 i want r i sorry r 1 j superscript n so r 1 j superscript n where j is an accepting state. Boom, there we go, we're done. So 
what we're going to do is we, we, we can build the regular expression by computing this. While we go from k is equal to zero up, we can think of it like rounds. And we're going to do it for all the pairs of i's and j's or whatever ones will be ne necessary. Usually it's a good idea to just compute them all because you're probably going to need them uh, at some point. But you don't, you, there are ways you can think about this more carefully. Um, so I just do this all the way up until n. And then what I do is I look at the terms, the expressions, the expressions r1j, superscript n, for any one of the one. Uh, so if a, a final state is labeled j, you're going to consider that expression and you're going to consider each one of them. So if for each j that's a final state, you're going to take all of them, you're going to lump them into one big bucket using union. And that's the final expression you're going to get. So are we okay with that? So that's going to be the general game plan when we're going to do this. Now I must stress one thing that I want you to observe, and this is no coincidence, is that notice that I made very little assumption about the DFA, right? I just, I, 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 like, I just said, oh yeah, if there's a transition or if there isn't a transition, do X, right? So it's a very easy, like you can see how this proof actually can apply for epsilon NFAs and NFAs, right? So I didn't make really any much of assumption about that every state has to have all of its transitions defined, for example. Uh, that, that I didn't make any assumption about. Like they all have to transition to some state. That's not used anywhere in this proof. So you, this proof actually works for epsilon NFAs and also NFAs. So I felt like acknowledging that fact. It's also worth noting that some you can actually take this construction and refine it a little further using a so-called notion of eliminating states. It drops the number of expressions down by a factor of n, uh, where n is the length, uh, sorry, is the number of states of the original DFA. But uh, I, I don't have time to cover it here, but I'm not going to expect you to know it. If you're curious about it, uh, it's in the Hopcroft book. But I'm not going to cover it here, nor am I going to require you to know it. But this process will work perfectly fine. It's just the only thing is that you might notice that the, this process is going to get a little exhaustive. So if you're curious about where that is in the Hawcroft book, uh, that's in uh, so in Hawcroft. I think it's in uh, chapter three point two two, if my memory serves me correctly. So if you find yourself curious about oh, can I make it so the, there's less states for me to deal with? There is a way to do it. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to do an example. So we're going to walk through doing this process. So I'm going to take the DFA I had before. So I'm going to have my same two state DFA like this. Start, I'm going to transition, have a self loop of zero on one. I'm going to have a transition from one to two on a one. And I'm going to have a self loop with zero and one on state two. And I'm gonna make state two the final state. So one piece of intuition, uh, if you think about it, what should this re what should the regular expression for this look like? Think about it. Okay, so so I just want you to think about it and keep it in the back of your mind. Just remember that this thing requires having the transition on a one to get to the final state. So I want you to keep that in the back of your mind as we're doing this, okay? So, so just remember the start state in this process is one. Uh, n is gonna be equal to two. And state two is the only final state. So if you were to do this and you encounter multiple final states, at the end of this process, you'll look at the rows of the table I'm going to generate for you. 
and you're just going to take the union of those and you can do any simplifications you need to do. So this is the only final state. So that being said, let's see if you, if you can recall this, right? So what's the goal? What do we actually have to compute then? So we're going to compute, because there's only one final state. It's R. What's the, what should go down here? I know the start state needs to be there, but what should go after it here? Somebody tell me, what's, what goes right beside this one here? Two. Yeah, exactly, because that's the final state. And remember, n is equal to two, so we know that this is what we're ultimately wanting to compute, is this. If I had multiple final states, what the expression you'll get at the end is that you'll have un this union each one of those final states. That's what I'm saying. But we only have one final state in our example here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to class kind of do this in rounds, where I'm going to start off with k is equal to 0, then I'll go to k is equal to 1, then I'll go to k is equal to 2. And we'll compute it for each i and j. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a little table. So remember, to compute, compute each time, I need to get, I, first I need to build, I have to consider the basis, right? And that's when k is equal to 0. So this is when k is equal to 0. So I'm going to consider r11. 0, r1, 2, 0. So I'm just going to consider all possible ways I can list i and j. r2, 1, and r2, 2, 0. So notice that these are all the possible ways i and j can be configured. So notice I'm just taking them and I'm just going between each i and j. And then I just, I'm considering when k is equal to 0. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the basis for each one of these. So when I look at one, so remember it's a state that goes from one to one. So it means that i is equal to j. Notice I have a self loop right here and it's on a zero. So notice that the expression that I should write is, remember when I have it where i is equal to j, I put epsilon in and I put the symbol or symbols if I have multiple ones. So notice that I have epsilon union zero. Now, if I do R0, 1, 2, notice that I go from 1 to 2. But notice that there's only one way I could get there, right? It's just this. <laughs> it's just 1. It's just on a 1. So I just put 1 there. Notice that from 2 to 1, so if there's a path, so I'm asking if there's a, a way I could transition from 2 to 1. The answer is, of course, no. There is no way to go. Like, there is no pathway from 2 to 1, right? So it means I'm going to put the empty language for the, well, the expression for the empty language. Now, 2, 2. Notice that this is when i is equal to j. And I have a self loop here. So remember, just like the previous one, I'm going to put an epsilon in. Then I'm going to have a union with each one of these symbols that I could transition from 2 to 2 on. 0 and 1. So this is round k is equal to zero. <laughs> so this is round zero. Are we all okay with this? So this is just me applying the basis. Give me a thumbs up and we're all good. Okay. So that's k is equal to zero. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to build our one ij. So now I need to go through this with another table. k is equal to 1. I'm going to do the same thing. Now, just to be a bit careful here, I'm going to write out the recursive parts. So just please bear with me as I do this, because it's a good idea you see it at least once. On the second round, I won't do it. But I'll have it in the notes. R, 1, 1, 0, star. 
R110, like this. So notice this is just what I just described earlier, right? Then the induction part. So what we have to do is I'm going to take each one of the expressions I have over there, because I have all of them, right? I just take each one, and you look at it like I'm filling in a blank. So all I do is, okay, R110, there it is right there. I just fill in the blank. I just put it in, and then I'm going to simplify. So, so let me do this for each one. R121, then I'll have R211, and I'm going to have R221. Now, one thing you have to be careful of, and this is a way, this is a trap, I warn you. Oftentimes, and even I have made this mistake myself in the past, is remember, it's R, I, K, then this is K, K. Sorry, sorry, sorry. This is R, I, K, then you have K, K, then K, J. So remember, this, 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 and this all need to be the same for the given round K. So, for example, when I do round two, this better be a two, that's a two, and that's a two. Everything on the outside, however, will look like these two. So this is the start, that's the end. So just keep that in mind when you're doing this, because it, 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 it is very easy to make a mistake. So just be wary of this. So I'm going to have RI20, sorry, 1, 2, R110, R110, like this, star, R12, see, see, R12, 0. And then I got R021 or R210, right? This is a zero right there. R2, is it 2, 2, or is it 1, 1? It's 1, 1, right? Remember, if, I, if I'm in the middle part, remember, this is K right here. This, these, these ones here, they correspond to K. And then I have, lastly, R1, 1, 0, like this. And then I do the last one here, R2, 2, 0, or R2, 1, 0, R2, no, not a 2, it goes 1, 1, like this. Remember, that's what K is, star. The zero there, one, one, or is it one, two? It's one, two. Remember, this is the start. Sorry, this is the start. That's the end. That's the start. That's the end. So now that I've written these out, it makes it a little easier for me to see what I'm doing now. So I'm going to have two columns here. I'm hoping I could fit everything in because this is going to get a little big. So I'm going to perform a simplification afterwards just so that. I can make things a little easier to work with in future rounds. I recommend doing this, uh, but you have to be careful. So I'm just going to substitute each one of those in for each one of these terms. So notice that R011, that's epsilon union 0. Or I have it where I take R110 again, epsilon 40. And I could do it with a star, right? <laughs> it's the exact same. 0 with a star, or I can have epsilon with a 0, like this. So this would be what R11 with a superscript 1 would look like, is I just substitute it in. So remember, I just look at each one, I look up over here what it is, and I just substitute that in. It's like filling in the blanks. So, so now I have this one. I'm just going to fill in these in just for the sake of time. So I'm just substituting in each one, epsilon union 0, epsilon union 0, star, and just a 1. Because notice it's R11, R11, and then I have R12. So far we're doing okay. I know this looks a little daunting at first, but I assure you, it's just that 
You have to be careful, and I'm just trying to be careful with you with this example. It's not too bad. It's not too bad. Okay, so now I have R21. Now R21, that's F, that's uh, the, em the, the expression for the empty set. And then R21, sorry, is it two? Let's see. Yeah, R21, and then I have R21 again. So that means that we're going to have empty set right here, right? And then I'm going to have R11, so that's epsilon union zero with a star. And then I have epsilon plus union like this. Sorry, it's plus, plus, it's plus zero. Now, when we get to simplifications, I'm going to make a couple of remarks about how we can simplify these. Last row, epsilon or zero or one or one, or, now this is the second case, empty set, epsilon or zero, and then I have one star. So no, no, not one star. We have the stars on epsilon plus zero, right? Then I just have a one at the end. So now, now this is my round one. Are there any questions about what I did here? Just don't be shy. So all I did is I just filled in the blanks. So I just substitute in what the expressions were from round zero into for round one. Okay, if there aren't any questions, I'm going to simplify this further down. So I'm just gonna take away this table here and I'm just going to, just for the sake of myself and our sanity, I'm going, to, I'm going to simplify this down. Now, I would normally put this column to the right, so if you're making your notes, just put this to the right of that. Uh, it's just I'm sort of ran out of space. So I'm gonna simplify each one of these rows to get rid of the redundancies. So the first thing I want you to observe is that I have epsilon or zero and then I have, okay, epsilon or zero concatenated with epsilon or zero as many times as I like, including none. Um, concatenated with epsilon or zero again. Now you would agree with me that if I were to just simply write this as say epsilon or zero star, it should capture these, this whole thing, right? because it concatenates with epsilon or zero, but it does it twice here, but like, it may as well just be epsilon plus zero star, right? Because I can do it as many times as I like. <laughs> um, so I could take a zero, or I could take not take a zero, right? But I could take zero as many times as I like. But notice that this expression over here basically says the same thing, right? I can take a zero or I can take nothing, right? I can take the empty string. What I'm going to suggest to you is that I could just simplify this to be zero star. So I'll be showing you some properties if we have time today to how you can derive that. If you're wondering about what the heck did you just do there? Remember, all I've done is I have either I pick zero or I pick the empty string. I could do that as many times as I like with the second one. In the first one, I either take zero or the empty string in the first place. Notice that in this, if I use zero star, if I don't take any zeros, I get epsilon, right? Which covers this. And also when I take epsilon every single time here. And if I take zero, any number of zeros, I get the zero right here. That's one zero. This is two zeros, and then I can have as many zeros as I like. So that's why I'm writing zero star, is I've, I've captured all of that in there. So I'm doing something really clever here. But it's not too alien. Now the next one, I want you to notice that I can take zero or epsilon. I can do this as many times as I really want, right? I could go zero and then I could take one, or I could just do one, right? But I could take as many zeros as I like, really, if you think about it, right? So notice that I could simplify this down a little further. I can use zero star one. 
So you might ask that, okay, Dan, how did that happen? Well, remember, I have a one, or I could take an epsilon, I could take another epsilon, as many as I like, and I could just have a one. That's just one right there, right? This other case with the eps with the zeros, notice that I could take a zero, and then I could take as many zeros as I like, but notice that taking one zero and taking as many zeros or no zeros is captured by zero star. So that's how I'm simplifying this down. Now the next one, this is a neat property here I wanna point out, is that if you have the empty set, like this, right here, and you can kinda of concatenate it with anything else following it, it actually ends up being the empty set, like the expression for the empty set. You might ask Dan, how is that possible? Remember the definition of concatenation, if I give you a, so concatenation with two languages. So I take each string in each respective language and I write them like this, right? I pair them up. I, I append one to the other. In the empty set, are there any strings in there? Somebody tell me, are there any strings in an empty set? Yes or no, or is, is the, does the empty set contain any strings? No, it doesn't, it, correct, correct. So notice that I can't pair two strings like X and Y like I do with concatenation because there aren't any strings in this. So the set that would correspond to this expression. So when I do concatenations with the empty string, it annihilates everything that follows it. Kind of like zero does in multiplication. Uh, when you're dealing with arithmetic. So if I have empty set concatenated with this, you'll say, okay, well, that's just the empty set. So I can't concatenate with the empty set. The empty set doesn't have any strings. Same thing applies right here. So this whole thing ends up being the empty set or the empty set. So it's just the empty set, the expression for the empty set here. And now the great thing about this one here is notice this has the empty set right here. This gets annihilated. So you end up with just this expression. So now I'm gonna work with these simpler versions here. So I'm gonna do round two next. Now, I'm going to cross my fingers that, uh, that you can remember some of these guys over here. Because I'm gonna quickly jot down the results for this. Actually, let's come back over here. Let's come back over here. I think I have enough room to pull it off here. Uh, so, just for simplicity, I'm gonna quickly write out, write the, I'm gonna take the simplified versions and I'm just gonna write them here. And then I'm going to get rid of this column here so I got some space here. And now let's do round two. Okay. So I'm going to write out each one here, R112, uh, R12 with a superscript 2, R21 with a superscript 2, R22, superscript 2. So just for the sake of time, I have it in the notes. I'm going to just write out what the expression would be. So I'd end up with zero star, or zero star one. Then I'd have epsilon zero or one like this. And with the empty, the empty set right there. So then, now, now notice, I wanna just point out, remember now these are the elementary building blocks of for the superscript two. So that's where these are coming from. So I'm just applying, see there's zero star, here's zero star one, there's this one right there, and then there's the empty set at the end. So if you're wondering where these are coming from, I'm just building it up. If you really just need to see the for, the calculation, just replace all of these intermediate, sorry, this, this, in, this one, this one, and this one to two, and you'd get the formula with the superscript for, for, uh, for two. So you'd put a one here instead of, instead of a zero. So now let's do this again. So I got zero star one 
or zero star one, epsilon or zero or one, with a star, and then I have epsilon or zero or one, like this. And then I have, for the third row, I have empty set or epsilon or zero or one. Then I have epsilon or zero or one star with the empty set at the end. And then I have epsilon. Now this one's a little longer. <laughs> epsilon zero one concatenated with epsilon zero or one. Then I'm, I'm just gonna continue the concatenation here, just below here. I'm kind of running out of space here. Epsilon zero or one star. And then I have epsilon plus zero plus one like this. <laughs> so this is round two, what it looks like. And now you might ask Dan, which row should I use? Now, of course you can simplify all these down, but remember I told you I want R one, two, two. I want this one. So I want this one right here. So I'm going to simplify this row only. Keep in mind, remember, if I have multiple final states, you'll just pluck off the rows that are relevant for you, and then you're going to take the union of those, and you can simplify it further. So let me simplify down that row, and then we'll end up with the result. So let me take and write that up up here, just for the sake of time, because I know we need to get going. R12, so I have 0 star 1, or 0 star 1 epsilon 0, 1, star, and then we have the epsilon, or 0, or 1, like this. Okay, so we need to be very careful when we do this, because notice that I have a 0 star here, and I have a 1, or I could take 0 star 1, and then I can have an epsilon 0 or 1 as many times as I like, concatenated with an epsilon zero or one. But I want you to think about this. Okay, so if I were to start off with writing zero star one, if I started with zero star one, you would agree with me that that covers this case, right? And this covers the first part of this, of the second case. Now notice that I can take an epsilon here, and then I can end up with zero one, right? or epsilon epsilon, right? Which is just going to end up being zero star one. Now, likewise, I could take a zero as many times as I like. And let's think about this. I could also take a one as many times as I like. But remember, if I don't take any zero or one, I end up with the empty string in either one of these, when I take both of them as, as empty string. So what I could do is I can concatenate this to simplify this down. I could take zero or one star. So I take zero star one, concatenate that with zero or one together star. And notice that I can actually generate anything after this with that. Uh, so now if you look at this regular expression, you'll say, hey, look, Dan. So that's, so first I must point out, this is the regular expression that at the end of our process, or this one, if you really want to be, painful, uh, but I would recommend, and I, this is probably what I'm going to ask you to do on the assignment, is to uh, simplify it down a little bit like this. Um, but look at it. It says zero star, so I'm allowed to take as many zeros as I like, but I need to take a one to get to two, and I'm allowed to take as many zeros or ones, and I can stay in the final state. Doesn't that nicely correspond to this regular expression? And boom, there, look, there it is. <laughs> uh, so. So that's an example of producing a, uh, from a DFA, a regular expression. So next time I'm going to cover algebraic laws of regular expressions and some other properties. And we might be able to get to asking more a fundamental question about are there languages that aren't regular? So when we come back, we'll start doing that stuff. So other than that, hopefully this helps and thank you very much and have yourself a beautiful day. I'll see you later.